Welcome to Pivot Exists in Real Life, where the memory of a lifetime is closer than you think. Today we're going to talk about Total Recall. No, not that one. But straight up, we'll get to it as soon as he's recovered from his rant on Batman v Superman. Why? Why would they make it rain worse than the room? It makes no sense! It's okay folks, he's gonna be fine. I laced his food with this. He should be out right about now. No, I'm talking about the Schwarzenegger film that actually got us thinking more than the first Terminator. Based on the short story We Can Remember For You Wholesale by Philip K. Dick and directed by Paul Verhoeven of Robocop fame, the movie revolves around Douglas Quaid, a seemingly mild-mannered construction worker. The only Arnold movie that successfully tries to convince you of that job. Seriously, he's played ordinary civilians before and after this movie, but much of his job description does not seem to consider an Olympian-sized bodybuilder to be qualified. Like a computer salesman. I'm looking at you, Cameron. Anywho, Quaid wants to go to Mars, but rather than take a shuttle and go, he goes to Recall, a company that specializes in artificial memories using virtual reality so he can go there without getting there. Props to them for including multiple choices on sexual orientation a decade before they became legal in the Western world. And they say movies can't predict the future or teach anything. As an added bonus, he decides to take the deluxe package where he can become a secret agent of Mars. However, it all goes wrong when Recall inadvertently unlocks memories of his past life as a secret agent. However, they manage to bring him back to normal and get rid of any memory of him entering Recall. Problem solved, right? Well... Many of his friends and loved ones try to kill him for blowing his cover, prompting him to find out what he used to be and try to solve the unsolved case that agent was pursuing at a time which could be the key for a better future on Mars. There's no way this could exist, right? Well... First, let's state the main things the series is known for. The first is recall. Now, there are two schools of thought when it comes to artificial memories. The first being able to convince the mind that these memories are real. There have been various means of inception, such as hypnosis and even conspiracy theories such as MKUltra that come into play for it. However, rather than say what works, I prefer to say how it could work as it can make things a lot more easier. First of all, the memory you need to affect in order to do such a procedure is long term. As for recall, in order to remember a vacation, it would have to be one that lasted a few months to a year depending on your purchase. The way you do this is to simulate and trick sp three specific areas of the brain. The first being the prefrontal cortex which creates short term memories. The second is the hippocampus which keeps the memory going until it transforms from a short term to a long term memory. And last but not least is the cerebral cortex, or outer layer, of the brain, which among most things keeps that long-term memory, which allows you to recall it whenever you wish. However, knowing which part is half the battle. The trick would be to create images that can convince your brain they are the real deal. Now it's no surprise there are various VR devices used for specific things from games to education, the most popular being the Oculus Rift. However, the device isn't as important as the programming you intend to put it. The best way of doing so would be to create images convincing enough for your brain to take them on into your memories and repeat them until your brain takes the hint. Which programs? It's simple actually. First, you need a facial recognition software so that every time you look at yourself in the mirror in the simulated reality memory, you'd know that the, that's the real you and the best VR imaging programs to convince you that you're at the place you wanted to go. In the case of Douglas Quaid, he wanted to go to Mars, so the best way to do so would be to have people actually go to Mars, take a bunch of images, convincing enough, and insert it into the program so that way you could actually see real images for yourself and put yourself in them. Now the last part is simple. The blue sky on Mars. It can exist. Before it was proven otherwise, this movie has made during the time when we thought there was no atmosphere on Mars. 
so going there without a spacesuit could prove disastrous. The device for the blue sky on Mars, as explained by Quaid, melts to the core of Mars, which is made of solid ice, releasing the oxygen particles into the sky. Now, the only downside is Kohagen is actually right about risking killing everyone. Without any core, the planet itself could collapse into itself as if its structure is not tough enough. So, unless the machine is used to melt enough of it that it would release the oxygen, you'd be doomed in using it. Plus, we all know what happened to that other planet that tried harvesting that core to survive. Though, while this movie was made back when we thought there was no atmosphere, it inadvertently showed us why the air suddenly stopped and made of sky, because if there was no atmosphere, even a thin one, in reality all that air would have been wasted because it would be vented off into space. As usual, debate, argue, let me know what I miss. Stay tuned for more. And get to us the malls. Get to us the malls. Get to us the malls. Get to us the malls.